Jean Ray Knight and Fit U Turn CEO joins us now to weigh in on the evictions. Thank you so much for joining us, Jean Ray. Firstly, what is your view on this matter? Are these evictions actually justified? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a really complex situation. From a legal perspective, uh, I guess they are justified because they've gone through the courts. Um, from a human perspective, we, we, we realize there's, there's a clash of, of, um, clash of rights here and, and a clash of responsibilities. So the city has to keep the streets clean and safe for its, its citizens. Um, and then you've got people on the streets who um, are there sometimes through no fault of their own, in other cases perhaps because of, of their own actions, but nevertheless they're trapped in that kind of environment. I think evictions are probably, the, the city has done a lot of work to, to try and create alternative spaces. They've really worked hard at this, uh, worked with us, they've worked with other NGOs. The big question is, is this going to help? That's, that's a question that, that we would ask. We're not in favor of homelessness. We're trying to help people overcome homelessness. Mm. But are the evictions going to help? And that there's probably a bit of a mixed uh, response to that. Some people will um, take up the city's offers um, of accommodation. Some people will then manage to get off the street successfully. Others will just end up stuck in the system or will just move further down the road. Um, but in terms of, of, of their justification, um, it's a complex, it's really a complex uh, answer to that question. It is rather complex, Jandre. I mean, the issue then of finding those that will remain in the streets. We know that this practice was largely criticized. I'm not sure if you can remember back during the COVID uh, uh, pandemic and also the illegal immigrants that actually form part of these homeless groups is another important aspect uh, in this whole exercise. So how do you think they're going to get around this issue? Well, I think, again, the, the issue of fining is problematic. Mm. Um, as far as we know, less than 0.2% of fines for homeless people ever get paid. So it's a rather fruitless exercise. They don't have the means to pay them. Um, and in fact, fining people often uh, presents them, uh, prevents them from coming off the street because it's mm -hmm. all these fines and all of these um, things that hang over their heads. Um, they are... Uh, there is probably not as much of a problem with illegal immigrants in Cape Town as there, as there is in other parts of the country, certainly in Johannesburg, we find that, that a much bigger issue than we do in Cape Town. Mm -hmm. um, but it is still a factor, yes. I'm not sure how the city is managing that, to be honest. Uh, I suppose the, the, the bigger question is, is, are there enough spaces for people and is it, what is being offered is it is it effective and efficient in terms of getting people off the street mm -hmm. and there there is there is a question mark i think a lot as i said a lot has been done but the issues of re helping people get jobs the issues of helping people reunite with families and become properly stable are again very complex issues we we work generally as you turn we work with homeless people over a period of about two years before they are completely stable employed sober and back on their feet so it's not something you can really do in an afternoon or even in a, in a couple of days or weeks yes yes absolutely and we would always advocate working with people to develop a sense of a, a will um or a motivation for change which which then helps them actually take a journey off the street rather than a sort of a law enforcement approach you make very valid points there, jean -Dre. I mean, looking at uh, that uh, that whole issue of safe spaces or shelters that are actually being offered as an alternative by the city, we understand that there is even certain rules that many people don't like. Hence, they actually prefer not to be confined in those shelters. So how do you think this will be mit mitigated on while ensuring that the people are free and, uh, of course, uh, don't revert to uh, going back on the streets again? You're absolutely right. They, uh, lots of people do not like the shelters. Mm. They do not want to stay in them or the safe spaces because of the rules. As I said earlier, our, our focus as an organization is to work with people on the street to develop a motivation to change. Once they feel motivated to change, they say, I want to get over my addiction, or I want, I want to get off the street, I want to get a job. Uh, they, they're far more likely to be able to fit into that kind of environment. We have much higher success rates when there's a strong motivation. If you push people into an environment with rules, then they won't, they don't like it. They'll, they'll push back. They've been on the street, they, they haven't had rules. At the same time, I really do understand the city's problem because they, they have a huge problem, 14,000 plus people on the street 
and and this increases crime it increases um the the, the dirt in and, and messiness in a place and obviously it detracts from tourism etc so it's, so they're caught in a situation they, they want they need they want the city wants wants fast solutions we as as an organization and many others in the sector are saying there are no quick fix solutions it's a long process all I don't right. want to point fingers at them. I, th I think they really, they really are trying to to do the best they can, but it's a difficult situation. But I mean, John Ray, very quickly to wrap it up. I mean, just on that point, are you currently doing any collaborative efforts with the city to ensure or try and assist them in that uh, maybe whatever they cannot do, then it falls in your hand, or some of the services that they cannot offer uh, the homeless, then they give it to organisations such as uh, U-Turn. Yes, it, we, we do work closely with the city. We have a, a good relationship. We obviously don't always agree. We, sometimes there are um, strongly differing opinions. Yeah. Uh, and then on other things, we do agree. So we do work closely with them. We would like to work more closely with them. Always what we're saying is put more money into reintegration um, programs, put more money into rehabilitation, put more money into job um, creation and support for, for people seeking employment and, and developing the skills for employment you get more bang for your buck in the long term with that than forcibly removing people um but but yes in short we do work with the city um and we do want to have a collaborative relationship with the city we'd like it to be more um more integrated than it is now uh, and and similarly we work with a lot of other ngos mm -hmm. to try and make sure that we bring our different strengths to the table so that we can be as long-term effective and u-turn does have an effect a, a rate a long-term rate of over 90 percent of people who graduate from our program who remain employed sober and housed so we do have some of the uh, the best methodology out there in terms of, of dealing with homelessness mm. it is a matter of scaling that and working with the powers of being all right. Thank you so much, uh, jean Ray, for your input uh, this afternoon. Hopefully the GNU, the new government, uh, might give you some of those, uh, you know, uh, some of those things that you want to tick off your list uh, that you've mentioned. Yeah, more collaborative efforts as well as more money uh, that is going to be put into these projects. That is Mr. jean Ray Knighton-Fit. Uh, he is uh, the CEO at U-Turn.